Hey, welcome back everyone. Uh, this is the 20th video of uh, Power Pages 30 days learning challenge. So if you are new to this learning series, uh, just wanted to give a quick introduction before proceeding uh, with this uh, new video. This is the mentorship program. I started this new year uh, where uh, uh, I'll dive deeper into the Power Pages components from basic to advanced. And uh, we are learning uh, how to quickly uh, create a low code, no code business website using the Power Pages technology. So, if I just wanted to give a quick uh, recap, what are the components and what are the topics that we have covered till now? So, as part of this agenda, we uh, we are uh, today we are on the 20th video where we're going to discuss about the portal web API. But if I just wanted to give a quick recap, we discussed about the introduction of the portal components licensing and uh, we also discussed about uh, some practical things uh, of the portals like how to set up a website, what is uh, how the designer studios look like, how to create a form to insert the data in the database, how the list look like, multi step forms, and we we had a couple of sessions related to the designings as well, like uh, how to manage the content, how to write the liquid templates code, how to design the home pages, uh, how to customize the toolbars, how to write the script. So a lot of interesting stuff we have discussed till now. Some of the things we discussed about the integration perspective, uh, where we discussed about the SharePoint integration, Power Apps integration, chatbot integration, and the Power BI integration as well. OK, now today in this video, uh, I just wanted to give uh, a quick background about uh, the portal web API uh, that is basically used to perform the CRUD operation on the data work. So if uh, if I just uh, look back uh, where the portal web API was not introduced, so we did not had much component in the portal to interact with the data verse. So we, we had only components that we discussed earlier, like uh, the forms, uh, that could be the basic form or the multi-step forms or the list. So that was the only way we had the fetch XML as well that we could use it in the uh, in the liquid templates or in the web templates. But uh, there was no way actually to update the data to insert the data except the forms or the list. OK, so there was uh, uh, and there was a lot of needs uh, uh, in the in the live project where uh, I want to customize the page. I want to create the subgrade HTML table. Uh, I want to validate something or, or I just wanted to have a control uh, on the operation that I'm going to perform on the on the on the data verse. OK, so like uh, we have the API already available in the data verse that we call it as dynamic 365 web API and uh, that that API is basically the rest based API and support course. And uh, you can interact with the data verse using that API. So in the similar way, Microsoft has uh, provided a web API called Portal Web API, and that API uh, gives you the flexibility uh, to perform the operations uh, with your custom code or your uh, or within uh, your out of box components. Also, you can use that API. And uh, let's have a look. Uh, you know what other uh, in interesting fact about it. So I'm going to cover everything about the Power Pages Web API here, following with the live practical example, how to use it and how to set up it. All right. Now, if I talk about why we use the Power Pages Web API, so we should know the capabilities of it, and all we should also know like what it cannot do it actually in the Power Pages. So if I talk about the capabilities of the Power Pages or why we use it, so Power Pages Web API is basically used to perform the CRUD operation along with uh, some additional option like associate and deassociate uh, across all the Microsoft Dataverse table from your portal pages. OK, so just one thing I would like to highlight here is it only perform the operation on the Microsoft Dataverse tables. What it cannot do is it cannot perform the CRUD operation on all the Power Pages related components. So we have the Power Pages related entities or the tables called content snippet, basic forms, uh, the list, uh, the site settings, markers. So there are a lot of components we already been discussed about. So it cannot perform the operations on the portal pages tables. It only perform the since these are all tables uh, are part of data watch tables only. But we call these tables as a portal tables because 
these are the table which actually uh, store the configuration related to the power pages. OK. So uh, that is a very interesting fact that uh, you can only perform uh, the operation only the dataverse table, not on the portal configuration table. Now, what are the operations that uh, it supports? So it supports uh, all the CRUD operations, so it can create the record, it can read the record, it can update and delete the records. And along with that, it has the association and de-association as well. So let's say we have uh, you know, any sort of relationship like one is to n or n is to one uh, and n is to n as well. So if you have to associate or de-associate the record sometimes, then you can also use the web API for that purpose. All right. Next is Power Pages Web API security. So uh, we have been discussed about the security a lot. So if you haven't watched my earlier videos, I would recommend to uh, watch them all. I'm going to provide the links in the description. So I have discussed already about the security. So obviously, uh, since the portal Web API is going to perform the CRUD operation in the Dataverse, so there should be a proper security in place so that uh, we can control uh, that uh, who is authorized to perform the transaction on the data verse. OK, so we we have the table permission that we already discussed about that can control at the table level that whether you can create the table. Uh, sorry, whether you perform the uh, uh, operation to create the data in the table, read the data or update the data or delete the data. So we have the table level permission as well, but uh, there is one more granular level of security that uh, that Microsoft provides in the web API that is column level of security. Right, so uh, if you already have the table permission, then you have to make sure that you have enabled appropriate column permission as well. So it is not it is something like the field level security we have uh, in the in the dynamics, but just wanted to highlight here is this column permission is only applicable uh, for this web API. It's not on. It's not uh, applicable for other features that you are using. So, for example, if you are creating a form, and you want, like, I want to apply uh, the column permission on a particular field, so that uh, the user cannot access that field value. So that is not for that purpose. Uh, unlike field level security, that is only for the web API. So, what column you can retrieve it from a particular table, it actually uh, decide that. Okay, to understand uh, it. Uh, in more uh, uh, way, uh, I just uh, created this diagram so you can see inside we have the Microsoft Dataverse. Uh, on top of it, we have uh, the portal builds. So all the communication of the data basically happens with the Microsoft Dataverse. So first level of security, you have the table permission. So let's say you have the contact table, account table. So you just lock uh, with the permissions like who can access uh, these tables. So if you have the access of these tables, then uh, you have the column permission enabled. So for example, you have access to read the data of uh, to the contact table, then what uh, you know columns you can access. It doesn't mean that you have provided the table permission on the contact table. You can access all the columns of it, right? So probably you don't need to. So let's say you have the first name, last name uh, and the salary. So these are the columns you have enabled. So you cannot access the salary of the employee, so you can lock that with the column permission. OK, and on top of the column permission where we, we have the web API settings as well. OK, so we're going to have a look quickly like how how the web API settings look like in the practical implementation, but web API settings basically decides like uh, which table or which columns uh, you want to retrieve it from the dataverse. So if you can see uh, this URL, uh, the power pages training and uh, power uh, portals.com after the API, uh, I have mentioned the table name that is contact and mentioned the, the all the all the you know the the column name of the table like first name, job title and the salary. OK, so in the web API also, if I have to retrieve uh, the the first name, job title and the salary from the contact table, so that I have to define it in the settings first that uh, on which table I want to enable the web API on which column I want to enable the web API. So that is the first level of security. So once you enable that web API feature on a particular table and on a particular column, then on top of it, you can provide the column permissions as well. So let's see. Uh, let's say I have applied the web API enable functionality on contact table. That means I can retrieve the contact data. 
and what column I can retrieve. I have uh, I have also mentioned in the settings like first name, job title and the salary. OK, now uh, that doesn't mean that you have provided the first name, job title, salary in the settings. You can retrieve it as well, so you can read that, of course, because you have mentioned in the settings. But option, but other transactions like whether you can delete that field value, whether you can update that field value that you can decide using column permission. So on top of it, you have the column permission. Then on top of it, you have the table permission. So there is a three level of security you have uh, before you can perform the operation of the transaction in the dataverse. All right. Awesome. So we have the web API configuration step so that we also going to perform in the practical session as well. But uh, uh, just to remember uh, what are the steps we have to perform in order to enable the web API for a particular table, because I have seen there are a lot of folks uh, are struggling uh, uh, with uh, issues uh, when they are configuring the web API. They, they, they set up everything, but still they get uh, sometimes resource not found error, uh, 500 internal error, 404 not found error. So there are a lot of uh, errors. They, they, they actually face it when they actually start using the web API in the real time implementation. So configuration steps are very, very necessary to understand that which step is used for what purpose. OK. So the first step you have to create the web API site setting. As I told you in my earlier slide, you have to create the site setting to enable the web API for a particular table. OK, so let's say if I have to uh, I want to retrieve the data of contact table, so I have to enable uh, the contact table for the web API. So I have to create the site setting uh, for that table first. Now for that table, what column I want to retrieve it? The second site setting is for the column. Uh, so let's say for the you know, contact table. I want to retrieve first name, job title and the salary. So I have to mention this column name in the comma separated form uh, in this particular site setting. Or if you want to retrieve all the column, then you can put uh, asterisk uh, instead of mentioning individual column name. So you should always avoid using asterisks unless it is really required. Uh, but if you are if you are trying to retrieve any out of box table like contact account lead opportunity, it has a lot of columns. That could be uh, that could be confidential from the internal user perspective, right? So you should always uh, avoid uh, you know using asterisk. Uh, if you if you have the custom table that uh, don't uh, have uh, much uh, fields or the columns and that doesn't have any confidential value, then you can anyways use the asterisk sign. All right, so you have enabled the set settings uh, for tables and the columns. Then the third thing is that you have to enable the permission. So the table permission. So let's say you have enabled. So you have basically created the site setting for two things. One is for the table and one is for the columns. So you have to enable the permission for all the uh, site settings. So first you have to enable the permission for the table, whether you can read, create, update or delete. And then you have to create the column permission for the columns, right? Because you have created two settings. One is for column and one is for table. So it's your duty that you have to perform the permission as well on on both the settings. So let's say uh, you have enabled three columns, first name, job title and salary. But on the salary, you you want uh, only read permission, create permission. And on the first name and job title, you want to perform all the CRUD operation. OK, so you can define in the column permission that which column uh, you want to perform the read, update and delete permissions. And the last one is your script. So once you enable all this configuration and uh, uh, enable all the settings, then you are good to go and then you can write the script to call the API uh, same like other APIs uh, uh, that we have uh, in the real time, right? So it's not a different thing uh, or different way to call this API because this API is also a REST based API. So the way you call the other external APIs uh, in your JavaScript code, you can call this API as well, OK? But still, I just wanted to uh, give uh, some basic information about this uh, API URL that how your web API URL look like. So let's say this is my URL. Uh, the first part uh, is uh, your uh, uh, API uh, Power Pages web API URL. So the HTTPS Power Pages training powerappsportal.com slash API slash. So this is Basically, your Power Pages web API URL. It can be changed based on your configuration. And uh, the second part is contacts. So that is obviously the column name. Uh, sorry, the it is the entity set name 
of the table. So uh, there are a couple of names of the table. The first is the logical name, schema name, and the entity set name. So there are a couple of uh, properties are there in the dataverse for an individual uh, component. So for a table also, uh, we have the logical name, uh, we have the schema name, and we have the entity set name. So here you have to use the entity set name. So entity set name is nothing but the plural name of your entity. OK, so let's say if my table name is contact, then the plural name, plural name of that entity is the contact. Sometimes it happens that you have created the table with already have S in the in the in the last character. OK, so for example, if the table names ends with the S, then you have to append the ES uh, in the name. For example, if the table name is events, so we have already created the table with the plural name, then your entity set name should be events. All right, so you should always remember that this is your entity set name. Then the green one, the first name, job title and the salary. These are the logical name of your columns. So for lookup columns, always you have to use the schema name. So these are the some of the settings you need to keep in mind and you always uh, end up facing a lot of issues because you always use a logical name. But uh, if you are using any lookup column in this list, you should use the schema name. I'm going to show that uh, quickly uh, in the live example as well. And another thing is that uh, CRFCO published by underscore value. So that is basically uh, the lookup column. So let's say you want to retrieve any lookup uh, field. So you don't need to provide uh, the schema or the logical name of the lookup field. If you want to read the value of it, you need to provide uh, this, uh, the field name in this particular format. The field logical name underscore value. OK, so let's say uh, if uh, the published by is the name of my lookup field. So if I have to retrieve the value of it, I need to provide underscore and the schema name, sorry, the logical name of it and then underscore value. OK, now you may have the confusion because in the earlier step I told like uh, for lookup columns, you have to use the schema name and uh, for, uh, you know, uh, for, you know, uh, uh, retrieving the the value of the lookup name. I have to provide this syntax. So basically there are two difference here. So lookup is basically referring to the another table. So if you are trying to insert the data in the lookup field, you have to mention that lookup field value as well. OK, so in that purpose, you have to use the schema name of the lookup. But if you have to retrieve the value of the lookup, then you have to use this underscore value format. OK, I'll show you in the live example so that you will understand that where we have to use the schema name and where we have to use the logical name. Few more things uh, and that is quite basic things. So if you have been using uh, the web API URL or the old data, then then dollar select is basically used to select or list down all the columns that you want to retrieve it from the dataverse table. Order is basically used to order the data in a particular order. If you want to retrieve the data or if you want, if you are creating an HTML table and you want to list down all the data in a particular order, then you have to use the order tag. Filter is basically used to filter the uh, the data based on the condition. So as you as you can see it uh, in the in the in the example, I am just ordering it by the name in the ascending order and filtering it by the revenue, which is greater than the ninety thousand. And the top is basically if you want to filter, uh, so it's a uh, typo here. So top is basically used to get the top records of it. So let's say if you want to retrieve the top three records or top five records only. So let's say you are creating a dashboard on the on the power pages and you want to show the top 10 opportunities that I'm working on currently. So you can use the top feature for that. So ignore uh, this text here because I couldn't change it. So this is about uh, the web, uh, web API URL. OK. Count sometimes uh, you just only wanted to show the count. So let's say we are creating the event management portal and I just want to show like how many events uh, have been published, how many events uh, I have registered for it. So if I just only want to show the count of it, OK, so let's say you are creating the portal for case management and you want to see like how many open cases, uh, closed cases or resolved cases. Then you can simply show dollar count equal to true. That will gives you the the count of the uh, the data that is in the table. Okay, 
Now, the last thing is the general data protection that is very important from uh, from the GDPR perspective that uh, whenever you uh, make the request from the portal, all the request header will have a contact ID passed for the auditing purpose. OK, so for the anonymous user, this will be passed as a null, but for the authenticated user, it was uh, it will always pass the contact ID who is making the request and what kind of transaction they are performing through the web API. OK, so if you have the auditing enabled in your organization, you can track track that as well that how many transactions have been performed and uh, which user perform uh, the what kind of transaction so that you can do it from the Office 365 audit log as well. So this is from the auditing purpose or reporting purpose. If you just wanted to trace it, uh, that which contact is uh, uh, you know performing transaction from the portal. So that is about that. All right. So let's quickly uh, get into the implementation and uh, and see like how the portal web API uh, configuration looks like. So this configuration cannot be done right now in the in the designer studio because that is uh, right now for the low code no code capabilities. So all the kind of low code no code components you can design it in the in the designer studio, but since it is it is one of the capabilities provided for the professional developer. So you you have to manage all these things uh, in the portal management app. OK, so I have already opened the portal management app uh, in a tab here. And uh, as you remember, like if I have to configure, uh, you know, the web APIs, first of all, I need to create the site settings. OK, so my my use case uh, for uh, uh, this example that I have uh, taken today is I want to create a page on the Power Pages site uh, called Manage Events, and I want to directly create the events. I can edit the events. I can delete the event. So. I've already created an event page called publish event if you remember if you have watched my previous videos, but uh, this time I just wanted to cre create a editable HTML table and I don't want to use any out of box components to perform the CRUD operation because earlier I was using basic form. And if you remember like in order to create the data, I was using basic form, but in order to update the data, I was using list. OK, so that I could see the list of data. And when I click on this, so if I just head over to my portal here. Let me open the portal so that I could show you that what action actually I was performing. So in order to perform the different different types of transactions, I was using different different types of uh, pages here. So if you can see uh, I had the publish event page. So this publish event page uh, was actually uh, using to insert the data, so it was creating the event, but uh, I cannot uh, edit the data or list down the data from the same page. I have to go to the view events page and here I could see the list of all the pages. Uh, sorry, list of all the events and uh, if I have to edit that, then I have to click here and click on the edit. Then then only I will be able to you know, edit the data. So there was so many clicks. Uh, if I have to use the out of box components uh, to update the data, delete the data, or insert the data. But instead of doing that, I just wanted to do everything, all the uh, operations from a single page. So I want to create a table, HTML table, and want to perform all the CRUD operation from there itself. OK, so I want to enable uh, the web API uh, for events page. So publish event page. OK, now. If I have to enable the publish event uh, for web API, I need to know the table name. So my table name is basically you can get it uh, either from here. So if I go to the tables or you can head over to the you know designer studio, go to the data workspace and you have this table called power guide event. So this is the table uh, on which I'm going to perform the CRUD operation here. OK, so if I go to the edit table properties, you can check the properties of the table directly from here. So this is uh, I go to the advanced uh, option. As I told you, every components that you created in the dataverse, you have the logical name that is always in the lower case. OK, how you remember like uh, uh, what is the difference between a schema name and the logical name? So I always remember with the keyword uh, L because L stand for lower case and L stand for the logical name. So this is the trick you can also use it. 
because sometimes you forget like uh, you know what is the logical name so logical name is always the lower case of uh, of of the display name okay of, of your schema name sorry because a schema name can have the some upper cases as well because it exactly copy the display name in the schema name so sometimes uh, it has the uh, you know the upper case letters as well but you have to always use the logical name in the apis okay so this is the logical name that we have to uh, use it in my uh, web api setting so let's head over to the portal management app and go to the site setting. So the first step, we're going to create the site setting uh, for uh, the table. So I have already created here. So if I search web, so this is the. The first site setting I have to create it. So this is I'm just enabling uh, the, the table for a web API CRUD operation. So this is the table name as I told you. So I copied from here exactly same sorry it's a logical so exactly same i copied from here and pasted over here so web api the name of your table and enabled and you have to set it to true so that is uh, that means i i can now start performing crud operation on this particular table so if you want to perform the crud operation on other another table then you have to create a new site setting for that particular table so for each individual table in the dataverse if you want to enable it for the web api crud operation then you have to enable it you have to create a separate site setting for that now i have enabled it i need to I need to provide the details like what column I want to retrieve it or what columns I can use it as part of this web API. So for that uh, I have a separate uh, site setting called uh, the name of the table and the fields. And here I have to provide all the column name. So here all the column name uh, is basically the logical name also. So if I head over to the table. And uh, if I just click here so let's say this is the event name so if i just wanted to check the logical name of this column so always remember that you have to use the logical name so if i go to the advanced option this is the logical name of this column so i have to use the same name here and in the comma separated form but this published by is basically uh, it's a lookup column okay so if i head over to the table again and check the published by column here it is since this is the lookup column, so I want to use the schema name here. See, so this is the schema name and here P is capital and B is in also in the caps, right? So for lookup column, you always have to use. Uh, uh, the, uh, the schema name. OK, now why you need to have the schema name of it? Because if you have to insert the data, you need to have the schema name of the data, right? Uh, if you are if you have a, a basic fundamental knowledge, uh, if you have to insert the data in the dataverse using plugins or using custom workflows, or if you are writing C sharp code, you always remember that if you have to insert the data in the dataverse, you have to use the schema name. OK, but in the web API, you always use the logical name. Right. So if, if you want to perform the insert operation using the web API, so then you have to use the uh, schema name here. Or if you just wanted to retrieve the data, then for uh, a retrieving purpose, this is the. This is the name uh, you have to use it for this particular lookup. OK, so CRCFO, uh, this is the prefix published by is basically uh, this is the you know the logical name of that entity and uh, underscore value. So this is the format you have to use it if you have to retrieve the value. But if you have to insert the value in that lookup because lookup is basically referring to the another table, right? So if you have to set the value in it, you have to use this value. So all the columns, whether no matter whether you are performing any operation, CRUD operation performing whatever attributes you required in the web API, you have to mention all the attributes in this particular format. All right. The third site setting that is basically the inner error. So you have to create this site setting so that uh, whatever error you are getting, you will get the uh, you will get the error message in the read uh, in the user friendly format. So sometimes uh, the web API gives uh, a common error message that you that that is not understandable that what exactly the error is. But if you enable this inner error message, that means it exactly gives the error message that uh, you are facing. So let's say if you do not have uh, 
the appropriate permission enabled so that uh, you can just quickly go and uh, enable the permission for that. Uh, so let's say uh, let's say I'm just giving an example. So you have not mentioned the event description field here, OK? But if you try to retrieve the event description from the from the code, uh, you will not be able to do that. So you will get the error message that event description field is not enabled for this particular web API, right? So these kind of error message, you will get it if you enable this site setting. OK, so these are the site setting you have to create it for each and individual table. Uh, this site setting is uh, is common for all, but these two uh, site setting is for the individual tables. All right, this is done. Now we have to head over to the table permission because that is the third step we have to do it. So if I head over to the table permission, I think uh, if you have seen my earlier uh, you know, videos, I've already uh, created the table permission, the security uh, videos so if i just go to my website if you just see uh event permission uh for admin i have already because i just wanted to create this table only for the admin because i want to give this privilege to the administrator only that they can uh, you know manage the event not all the authenticated user can create update or delete the event so i have created a permission here <clears throat> that on the on the same table I want to give the global privilege that uh, you know you can read, create, update, and delete, but only for the sorry, only for the you know the administrator, okay? But for the authenticated user, uh, for the rest of the users, I don't want to provide the create option, the write option, and the delete option. They can only read it, uh, but they cannot. Uh, perform the create and update and the delete. OK, so that is for the rest of the authenticated user. But right now I'm logging on the portal uh, with uh, the admin privilege. OK, so the table permission is done. You have to enable the table permission as per your need. Since I want to perform the CRUD operation on this table, so you have to enable uh, the table permission for this particular table. OK, now the third thing is that we have to enable the column permission. So column permission is actually optional. It is not mandatory actually, unless you have the specific need. So let's say, uh, but I just wanted to give a quick uh, uh, introduction about it. So if uh, let's say I have created a column permission here, and uh, you can see it here that I have also mentioned in the, my slide deck that they, these are currently available for web API features, not for other features if you just wanted to use it. So this is the column permission I have created. So once I create the column permission, I have two options. Either I want to give uh, the uh, I, I either I want to give the you know access to all the columns so I can select here and select all. That means for this particular table I can access all the columns. Okay, but it's not a good practice actually. I can provide the individual column permission as well. So for this particular table I have created two column permission. So for example for event name I can uh, perform the create read and update. And for published by also I can perform create read and update. If, if I don't uh, provide this by default, it can create read and update. But sometimes uh, uh, you have some of the columns uh, and on which column you want to, you don't want to perform the update or the delete, right? So in that case, you can only create uh, uh, the column permission and provide them the create read and the uh, uh, whatever permission you want to provide. So you can click on the new column permission here and uh, you need to choose the column here whatever column it is uh, there for that entity and here you can provide the necessary privileges okay so the only thing i just want to highlight here is all the columns that you have already enabled in the web api settings you can by default perform the read operation create operation and the delete operation update operation all the operation by default you can perform it unless unless you are providing any column permission here if you are providing column permission here then this 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 security will be applied on all those columns all right perfect so we have enabled all this settings as well now let's head over to the javascript part where we going to write the code to perform the CRUD operation. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm just heading it to uh, heading over to the uh, designer studio and click on the pages. And I've already created a pages called manage events under the events. OK, so events is uh, basically my parent page and under that I have created a manage event page. And on this manage event, if I click on edit code 
I have written uh, uh, some of the HTML and the JavaScript uh, to design a table. So I'm not uh, diving deep into that, how to write the HTML code or CSS or the JavaScript to design the table. You get plenty of examples on the internet, okay, uh, to how to design the editable subgrade, how to design the HTML tables and all. So I just wanted to give, uh, you know, the syntax of it, how you can perform the add, how you can perform the delete operation and how you can perform the update operation. So I just wanted to give the background about that. And I'm, I'm also going to provide this uh, code in my GitHub repository. So if you just wanted to have a look into it, you can also watch it from there as, as well. OK. I just created a normal table and now if I have to add the record, if you can see here. Uh, I if I have to insert the data, uh, I, I'm, I'm currently taking three columns uh, for uh, uh, demonstration purpose, event name, event location and the published Y. So published Y is a lookup column, right? Uh, so I just wanted to give the example of lookup as well so that you will understand uh, where to use the logical name and where to use the schema name. All right. So I want to uh, add uh, the record and I want to insert the data only these three fields. So when I insert it, event name should uh, go with the type event name and uh, event location type event location. So I'm going to type it here. But in the published Y, so published Y is basically my uh, lookup column. So since I want to insert the data in the lookup column and uh, I have to, you know, since, since lookup is basically uh, uh, the table that is referring to the another table. OK, so in order to insert the data in the lookup table or set the value in the lookup table, I always have to use the schema name and this is the syntax I have to use it. So this is the schema name of my lookup field. And then I have to use this O data bind. OK, and uh, this is the table uh, for uh, which I'm going to, uh, you know, retrieve the data because this published by is basically referring to the contact table. So I want to set the contact table data. So I'm uh, sending the information that uh, go to the contact table and find user.id. So user.id, you know, like if I have to retrieve any logged in user information, I have to use the liquid syntax called user because it's a object or it's a container which contains all the information of the logged in user. And since if I have to set the value in the lookup field, I need to set the uh, unique identifier. I cannot set the text value or, a, a, or any other value. I have to use the unique identifier. So I have to use the user.id that basically gives me the contact GUID. OK, so I am just sending this information that set this uh, in this lookup. Go to the contact table and find this GUID and set to this lookup value. OK, and then uh, the way you call any, uh, you know, Ajax, uh, you know, uh, syntax or the way you call any external REST web API, I'm using the same. I am just uh, calling this API. Uh, so this is the URL. Uh, sending the data in the application and JSON format and then you know converting it to the you know JSON and getting the record object and uh, once I get the success message I'm just uh, adding the record into the table okay so this is the syntax of uh, you know the post message because I'm just inserting the data and here this is the delete example so for deleting uh, I need to have a uh, uh, the GUID uh, of the uh, or the unique identifier of the record. So this is the syntax and I have to use the message called delete and this is the you know. The URL I have to use it and the uh, the ID of the of the record that I'm choosing it from the table. OK, one very important thing about uh, you know this API URL is that I'm using uh, the entity set name here in the URL as I told you that uh, in the uh, in the schema sorry in the web api url you always have to use the entity set name and if you remember uh, the name of my entity so the name of my entity is basically this so it already has the s in the in the as a end character so that means it's already a plural so i have to append es as a additional character here to convert it to the plural value so this is this uh, entity set name I'm using here and same goes with update. So I need to choose or provide the, the GUID that I want to update it here. 
OK, so th this is just a very simple example. I'm going to post it on my GitHub repository as well. You can just have a look at it because it is the same way how you call it any external web API. So uh, I'm not going to change anything here. So let's me cancel it and uh, go to the preview. Uh, to see like how this HTML table looks like. So if you can see here under the events, I have created a manage event. So this is just a simple HTML table. And uh, so this is the retrieval. I'm retrieving all the events here and on 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 hovering to the particular uh, column. I, I get the option to you know add it it directly. I get the option to delete that record and I get the option to add event as well. OK, so let's say if I add a new event here, so it by default create the event with type event name type location. So let's say I'm typing the event. Uh, let's say power page hackathon. All right, click OK. So it got updated to hackathon event location. Let's say I'm just giving to. Angular. India. OK. And uh, since I have not refreshed the table actually, so uh, the data got inserted. If I just refresh it, I can provide the refresh option as well. So yeah. All right, so if you can see here, the published by has not been auto populated. So published by is supposed to be the logged in user. OK, so it should be auto populated here. But as you can see, uh, it was actually commented out and uh, I didn't refresh the. I didn't sync the changes, so let me save this data. And sync the changes here. So you don't need to perform the query uh, in order to retrieve the logged in user information. Uh, you can get that information from the liquid template syntax called user.id and it always gives you the logged in user details. So let me head over to the portal again and uh, let perform the delete operation first so that you can check that as well. So let me delete this record. So are you sure you want to delete? All right, so it got deleted. Let me add a new event and uh, update that. Uh, Power apps hackathon. OK, location I just wanted to give. India. OK, so this information got updated, so if I just try to refresh the page. You can see uh, the Arpit uh, Srivastava, which is the logged in user, get automatically auto populated here. And now this new record got added. And uh, whatever operation I'm performing, I can uh, see it in the view events as well. So that is the out of box list components. So now you can see here Power Apps Hackathon. Uh, since I didn't provide other information on the grid, so you can see here Power Apps Hackathon Pune. So these details got updated in the out of box list as well. OK, so this way uh, I can perform a lot of operations. So this is just an example how you can perform the third operation in the portal web using the portal web API. Don't worry, I'm just going to provide this code uh, uh, in the description link so that you can uh, download this code or edit it as per your business need. But uh, the objective of this uh, portal web API uh, uh, you know, session is to let you know like uh, how you can perform the, uh, the CRUD operation in the Dataverse. And sometimes you need to you know, validate something. Uh, probably you may not require to perform all the operation in one go, but uh, the retrieval is one of the operation that uh, you often use it. Sometimes you have to perform any complex validation. You need to check it in the Dataverse table. Uh, then allow user to submit the data. So in that case also you can uh, you can use the, the web API. OK, so thank you so much uh, for watching this video. Uh, in the next video, we have uh, some more interesting stuff coming up. So if you if you like this video, just uh, just put it in the comments. If you have any questions related to the portal web API uh, that uh, also you can post it out in the comment. I'll try to respond it back. OK, thank you so much. Take care. Bye bye.